Good afternoon and welcome to all of our parishioners in the greater Medford area, to our Sacred Heart parishioners and our St. Joseph Mission parishioners. Uh, I want to leave you this video to give you some guidelines or some expectations that we will be trying to follow as we relaunch the celebration of public mass. Uh, so these things will be available in hard copy form, a printable form. If you click the link below, you should have a copy available to you in English or in Spanish. Answers to commonly asked questions and safety guidelines that we will try to follow according to the Archdiocesan protocol. But I thought I would leave you a summary form, a conversational form for those who would prefer to get the information that way. So just a couple of general areas of information I want to cover. First is about the availability of the Mass itself. So as a vicariate, we wanted to make sure that when we returned to the celebration of public Mass, we would launch on the same weekend as a region. So for Southern Oregon, we determined after some discussion this week that we can all meet the requirements necessary uh, laid out by the Archbishop and that we will all be reopening Mass beginning on May 23rd, which is the Saturday evening Vigil Masses. So not this weekend, but the following weekend will be the time of our relaunch. And uh, then daily Mass will follow from there. And from that point forward, public Mass will be available. Uh, obviously, the one major restriction that we have to adhere to for the time being is that at each of those masses, only 25 people or less can attend. That's the crowd restriction size set by our governor. So that poses a lot of practical challenges, but uh, our weekend schedule will be as normal, what you're accustomed to. You can consult past bulletins about that, but if you would like me to list them off, I can do that. I would just say the one exception is, unfortunately, we won't be able to relaunch public mass at the Jacksonville Mission yet. Uh, if you've not been inside that building, uh, it's very small. And because of the strict physical spacing requirements, I've calculated that we could only accommodate eight people at that liturgy. If we were to have it there, that's just simply too much of a restriction for us to uh, seriously resume liturgies there. So for the time being, we will have to confine ourselves to Sacred Heart Parish as we resume. But on the weekend, there will be seven masses available. Two will be Saturday vigils and then five on Sunday. The vigils will be at 5.30 p.m. Uh, and 7 p.m. in Spanish. So 5.30 is English, 7 p.m. in Spanish. We will not yet have the resumption of public confessions at 3.30. So that will be something we will be launching in a couple of weeks following the successful launch of the Mass. Confession will remain by appointment only until we, we have our sign-up system running smoothly for the Mass portion. But there will be those two vigils. And then on Sunday itself, there will be an 8.30 a.m. English Mass, 10.15 a.m. Spanish Mass, noon English Mass, 1.30 p.m. Spanish Mass, and a 3.30 p.m. Latin Mass. Those are the ones. And uh, daily Mass that will follow that launch weekend will be 10 a.m. So this is a different time than we've had in the past, but 10 a.m. Monday through Saturday morning. And we will also be offering, just during the time of this COVID-19 shutdown, uh, we will be offering also an evening daily Mass. That will be at 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. So there will be two daily Masses. 10 a.m. Monday through Saturday, 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Those are the full list, okay? Um, we have formed an ad hoc communications and technology committee. Uh, we've set the parameters of what we need for an online sign-up system. Um, we've uh, subscribed to a service that is going to meet our needs. I'm told that it may be up and running as early as tomorrow, but I will only be comfortable guaranteeing that it will be up by Monday, May 18th. Uh, we need that lead up time to make sure we have time available for people to sign up for these liturgies. Also, because we need to generate hard copies to track people entering the church at the beginning of the liturgy, we've set a limitation that you have to sign up no later than two days before the liturgy. So 
You need to allow yourself a 48 hour window. If you want to attempt to attend one of our weekend masses, you need to have successfully signed up by no later than 5 p.m. on Thursday evening. Okay, so I, I say that because we're in a mobile device era and we just can't have people showing up at the front of the church like in standby mode, monitoring the crowd size and seeing if there's availability and then trying to sign up by cell phone. We need to be able to have a hard copy available for us to check names off at the door. This is a, a limit that the Archbishop is demanding right now. So we don't have flexibility on that. And we absolutely cannot allow anybody to enter the church if you're not signed up through that system. So if your name is not on the printed list, we will have to ask you to remain outside. And we ask your patience and understanding in that process, but we'll direct people online to complete that. If you're listening to this and you're aware of family or friends who don't have internet access, we understand that this system is not perfectly fair, but please advise them that they can also sign up by calling our parish office. Our staff can log on to the system for you and fill it in. When you go in, it will be very simple. Uh, we will try to maintain a four week window for signups. So approximately mo one month worth of masses will be available for selection. If you click on a mass time, I'm told there will be a pop-up window indicating how many seats are still available for that mass. So if you're a family of say five or six and you need five or six spots because you don't want to split your family up, well, you'll be able to know as you check the mass time whether or not there are enough spots still available for your entire family. But when you go on, you'll need to complete this process individually for each person. We don't have a family sign up. So uh, for a group, you have to repeat for each individual. You'll, you will enter the person's name You'll enter a reliable contact phone number in case there's a medical emergency later. And we would ask that you include an email address. That's because our system will send you a confirmation email letting you know you successfully signed up. And, and if you signed up, say, three weeks in advance for a later mass, it will also send you a confirmation or a reminder email uh, the day before the mass takes place to remind you what you signed up for so that you don't miss it, okay? If you're not able to successfully sign up, which will be the case for some of you, I guarantee, uh, of course, we ask your patience and flexibility, but also uh, I want to remind you that the dispensation, uh, removing the requirement to attend Sunday Mass, it will remain in effect until this COVID crisis has in completely passed. So, if you can't secure a time, the Archbishop would ask, as we've been doing up to now, try to watch a Mass by television or online with a live streamed Mass. Try to make a spiritual communion. Uh, try your very best to keep the Sabbath holy. You're, you know, you're excused from Mass attendance. You're not excused from keeping the Sabbath holy. That's a separate distinction. Uh, that means trying to make it a prayerful day, maybe reading scripture, praying as a family. Uh, we do our best. Uh, the expectation that I'm trying to set out in the beginning is that uh, you limit yourself to one successful reservation of Sunday Mass per month. And I, it's still a question mark how many people will try to sign up for daily Mass, perhaps if they can't go to a Sunday Mass. So in lieu of that, I don't know. But if it were just daily Mass people signing up, I would say the expectation is limit yourself to one daily mass per week and one Sunday mass per month. Um, we may have to adapt to those expectations, but please try not to exceed that. That's because, uh, as I say, we have thousands of parishioners and they all want to presumably attend mass and have the chance to receive the Eucharist. So we want to give everyone an opportunity. When you come, please know your safety is important to us. Uh, you're recommended to wear a mask. It's not required. If you are over 65 or you are an at-risk person, you have some other extenuating medical condition, you will be allowed to attend if you want, but the Archbishop recommends you not. Um, he asks you to consider staying home 
Uh, if you do come, please know that just as with everybody else, you're assuming your own risk in doing that. There might be uh, even some text to that effect that you check a box saying, I understand, I'm, I'm assuming my own risk when I come. Um, we'll try to limit the entry point of the church to one door. So all the other doors will remain locked. The door that we will use for entrance for the mass will be the side door facing the parish hall that you will be met by the priest at the door who will have a clipboard for the names of those who've signed up successfully for that mass. He'll check you off as you enter. And then as you go in, uh, I'm using the Providence Hospital model. We would ask that you sanitize your hands before and after the liturgy. So there'll be hand sanitizer at a number of cleaning stations. Uh, every other pew has been closed off. So you're asked to find a location, probably no more than two people per pew uh, and with every other pew being closed. The one exception being if you're a family who live under the same roof, you're allowed to sit together as you normally would because you've already been exposed to each other. So for that purpose only, you're considered, if you will, as one person, you can sit together. Uh, we've removed all the cushions. We removed all the missilettes so there are no surfaces for people to be touching. Uh, other than the, the back of the pew in front of you. But we would ask at the end of the liturgy that each of you help us because at those cleaning stations, in addition to hand sanitizer, we will have either spray bottles with an alcohol solution or alcohol wipes. So it'll either be a spray bottle with a paper towel or an alcohol wipe. We would ask that before you go, you wipe down the area where you sat. And then we purchased large plastic garbage cans with foot pedals to, to open the lid uh, to dispose of the white bets. Uh, we, will be, we will not be exchanging sign of peace. If people gather socially before or after mass, we ask you to keep your physical distance. The priest will, mer will wear a mask during communion time. And if uh, we're asked to have those who will be receiving communion by the hand to come up in line first followed by those who wish to receive on the tongue because that is a slightly riskier form of communion under these current conditions. So just to minimize that, we'll ask you to go last. Uh, and we will not have uh, physical bulletins to hand out or, or those kinds of things. So we're gonna keep that to a limit. We're keeping our ministry roles to a limit as well, just to maximize the number of opportunities for you to attend. What that means is that uh, we may ask for volunteers to read at the Mass you're at. Uh, the one exception is on Sunday, we'll try to have trained readers and we'll try to reserve a spot at one of the Masses for our deacons to attend, um, just so they can exercise their holy orders as well. But other than that, it will be missionary style. So again, your patience, your prayers are much appreciated. Please be kind to our staff as we try to navigate this. I know for some of you it would be stressful. We're doing our very best under these very challenging conditions. And we hope to see you at Mass soon. God bless you, and may Almighty God keep you well and safe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.